Today in the news, we talk about the RTX 3050. Can it really help our GPU shortage? What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. So the RTX 3050 is pretty close to release. And with that, we of course got some leaks on the performance side. And honestly, it's a little bit surprising. So performance, the card was tested on 3D Mark and with Firestrike at 1080p, TimeSpy and TimeSpy Extreme. Starting with Firestrike 1080p, it scores a whopping 15,843 points. When compared to the 6500 XT, it's only about 4% faster. I expected a lot more of a difference here. Then we have TimeSpy, when the uh, RTX 3050 has a graphics score of 6,166 points. Now here is where we see a big difference because that is 24% faster than the 6500 XT. And lastly, we have the TimeSpy Extreme Test. It has a graphics score of 2,801 points. Once again, around 24% faster than the 6500 XT. All in all, that means that this card's performance is slightly under a 1660 Ti. That's pretty solid, especially considering the 1660 Ti didn't have any RT or Tensor cores, which means that the 3050 has a pretty big up its sleeve. With DLSS, you have a pretty insane boost in performance without the pretty big downgrade in image quality that traditional upscalers have, like FSR. Of course, that's if the game supports it. If it doesn't, you still have NVIDIA image sharpening or FSR available to do that. Plus, the RTX 3050 comes with the same NVENC engine as all the other RTX 3000 series GPUs, which, yeah, no contest on that front from AMD. Now, before you raise your pitchforks and yell at me saying that this GPU will just disappear out of the shelves because of miners, well, you might be surprised. We actually have some leaked mining details. The main culprit here for mining is Ethereum. It uses the ETH hash algorithm, which is affected by LHR. That means that this GPU's hash rate will be cut down by at least half. According to current leaks, the RTX 3050 has a standard hash rate of about 12 mega hashes. That's on its own with zero tweaks. Once tweaked, the hash rate climbs up to about 13.6 mega hashes, and to put it into monetary value, that's about 50 cents per day right now. After electricity costs at 10 cents per kilowatt, that drops to 36 cents per day. And with all of the optimizations, it can go up to 50 cents per day after electricity costs. That's a return on investment of almost a year and a half or almost 17 months. And that's if the difficulty doesn't go up. And if we look at the current charts that show the difficulty of mining Ethereum, it's only gonna go up from here. Plus, ETH is supposed to introduce a difficulty bomb in the summer that would definitely deter some miners. On top of that, Ethereum is supposed to go proof of stake. And while mining will still exist, I doubt that it will be anywhere as profitable. So miners won't buy new GPUs and instead will likely mine what they already have. So it's bad at mining Ethereum. What about Ravencoin? A coin that can be mined on four gigabyte cards too, like the RX 6500 XT. Well, we can estimate that since the 3050 Ti laptop GPU has about the same specs as the RTX 3050 desktop edition, the desktop model should have a hash rate of about 13 mega hashes. And thanks to the halving that happened a couple of weeks ago, Ravencoin mining is about as profitable as Ethereum, about 50 cents per day, which is just a little bit higher than the RX 6500 XT, which I believe is about 36 to 40 cents per day. So all in all, this GPU will suck at mining too. Now, I'm not saying that that it won't be scalped, but with this info, we can tell it won't be good at mining at all. Which brings me to availability. I expect this card to be both more and less available. More because miners won't see the benefit of buying them en masse, but less available because it's likely that a lot of people are gonna try to buy it. And because the die is way bigger, Nvidia won't be able to produce as many as the RX 6500 XT. I mean, it's literally two and a half times the surface area. 
Also, it's possibly going to be more expensive, like way more than the 6500 XT. That's because AMD delivered such a subpar experience with it that the 3050 might single-handedly cover this price bracket. So the prices will be hiked like no other. I mean, we saw this Peruvian retailer list a bundle with a single stick of memory, and after conversion, it's basically $450 US. And in Japan, it's sold out at the equivalent of 400 USD. Yikes. I'm not saying that the leaked performance and the incredibly inflated price will justify the 3050, it's just less of a slap in the face. I guess we'll have to wait for the reviews and uh, prices to show up before we jump to conclusion. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a uh, comment if you wanna talk about today's story. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, 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 oh,